More than 50 years ago July 4, 1961, eight people died during the elimination of the nuclear reactor accident at a depth of 180 meters on the Soviet submarine K-19. On July 4, 1961, the nuclear-powered submarine K-19 was the first nuclear reactor accident in the history of the Soviet submarine fleet in the North Atlantic. The nuclear submarine K-19 of Project 658M was constructed at the Northern Machine Building Plant in Sivirodvinsk, Arkhangelsk region, launched on October 11, 1959 and entered service on November 12, 1960. In June 1961 K-19 was included in the Northern Fleet. K-19 was the first nuclear-powered submarine of the USSR, which could carry three nuclear-tipped ballistic missiles on board. With this nuclear-powered submarine, designed by Rubin Central Design Bureau in record time, the Soviet Union responded to the challenge of the United States, which already had the nuclear submarine George Washington in service. The nuclear reactor of the K-19 boat allowed it to cruise anywhere on Earth in a stealthy position while in the depths of the world's ocean waters. In June-July 1961, combat exercises codenamed Polar Circle took place in the Atlantic Ocean. The Soviet Navy worked on the interaction of surface and submarine ships. The exercise was also attended by the boat K-19, whose commander was first-ranked Captain Nikolai Zaitiev. On July 4, 1961 an accident occurred while the submarine was en route to the North Atlantic for training firing. At 4.15 a.m. the emergency protection of the port side reactor went off. The cause of the accident was sharp decrease of water pressure and volume in the compensators of the primary circuit of the reactor cooling system. As it turned out later, the leak in the section not being shut down occurred through a tube of one of the pressure sensors. As a result of the drop in the water level, the two pumps that circulate the coolant jammed. The core temperature increased to a value that was dangerous for the destruction of fuel elements. The nuclear reactor accident could have led to a boat explosion and subsequently to a global ecological catastrophe radioactive poisoning of the ocean waters. The submarine commander decided to install a pipeline from improvised materials to duplicate the damaged section of the cooling system. Within two hours, the submariners mounted the cooling system and rescued the submarine while it was exposed to radiation. In the future such duplicate circuits appeared on all submarines. During elimination of the accident 42 crew members received high doses of radiation as a result of distribution of active gases and aerosols the radiation situation in inhabited compartments of the submarine was complicated. For and a half hours after the accident, the exposed sailors began to show signs of radiation sickness 15 people were severely ill, 11 were moderately ill, and 16 were mildly ill. The situation was complicated by the fact that the antenna of the main transmitter was damaged and the commander of the submarine was not able to report the accident to the base. The emergency transmitter made it possible to contact the two medium diesel submarines which took part in the exercise. They reported the submarine accident to their command. Ships with medical and rescue personnel were sent to the submarine in distress. By the evening of July 4, 65 sailors were evacuated from the sub, a day later all crew members left the sub because it was dangerous for their lives because of the radiation. Before that, the K-19 was rendered inoperable. Several days later, when surface ships with medical teams approached the accident site, K-19 was taken in tow and moved to the base. All these days the two diesel submarines, to which the crew members of the submarine were evacuated, kept the K-19 under torpedo guns if the foreign military tried to get on her, she would have been sunk. 87 hours after the accident the entire K-19 crew was hospitalized. Eight people who received maximum doses of radiation died within a week. Two were buried in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, and six were buried in Moscow at the Kazminsky Cemetery. The others were treated for a long time. A government commission recognized the crew's actions to eliminate the accident as correct, 
the crew was awarded valuable gifts, many, including posthumously, received orders and medals. The nuclear submarine K-19 was sent for repairs. In 1962 to 1964 both nuclear reactors were replaced on it. After the 1961 accident, the submarine K-19 was given a nickname Hiroshima and a reputation as an unlucky ship which it later lived up to. There were accidents, fires, and collisions above and below water. On November 15, 1969 during the practice of the combat training tasks in the Barents, CK-19 collided with the American submarine Cato and after receiving damages returned to the place of basing. The accident which happened to K-19 in February 24, 1972, while carrying out combat duty in the North Atlantic was tragic, as the result of fire in the ship compartments 28 people were killed. After the accident in 1972, the submarine was taken to the ship repair center Zvezdaka in Sivirodvinsk where it was upgraded and modernized. After repairs, the K-19 was repeatedly put on combat duty in the depths of the sea and the ocean. In 1990 she was taken out of service with the Navy. In spring 2002, the legendary submarine of the Northern Fleet completed its last voyage, it was towed from Araguba to the Nerpa shipyard in the Arctic Circle for recycling. For a long time, the 1961 accident on the K-19 was classified. The sailors, having signed an undertaking of non-disclosure, kept silent about the incident. Even their relatives were not told what had happened to them. In the 1990s, the K-19 tragedy was covered publicly. Newspaper articles and books were published. In 2002, the American movie K-19, The Widowmaker starring Harrison Ford and Liam Neeson was presented to the general public. The memory of the exploits of the sailors from the K-19 is alive and on July 4, 1998, a memorial monument to the crew of the K-19 was erected at the Kazminsky Cemetery in Moscow. The silhouette of the submarine unites six stone tombstones. If you were interested thank the author by giving me a nickname. And also don't forget to subscribe, so you won't miss even more interesting videos on my channel. Turn on notifications by clicking bell and share this clip with your friends. What else interesting you can add on this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read.